time I will bring you again. Even in the time that I gather you. It says when you respond to this gathering, the great gathering that is going to happen. It's not just you alone. You are in partnership with the almighty God. And it says I will gather you. And then it says I will make you a name. They will not blot out your name. You will not get out of the register. He says, I'll make you a name. And he prays among all people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, says the Lord. Thank God that is going to happen. Isaiah chapter 56, I'm reading from verse 7. Isaiah chapter 56, we're looking at verse 7 and then verse 8. The gathering of the people as we gather together unto the Lord. Isaiah 56 verse 7. Even then will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. And when we get to that retreat, if you didn't know to pray, the spirit of prayer and supplication will come upon you. And then it says when we pray like that He will give us the, the fullness of joy I will make them joyful in my house of prayer Their bond offerings and the sacrifices Shall be accepted upon mine altar For mine house shall be called And house of prayer for all people The Lord God which gathereth the outcasts of Israel Says the Lord God which gathereth you see that word gather, gathering, gathering all over the Bible. It means then if you're a Bible believer, if you're a true child of God, if you have a Bible in your hand and you obey that Bible, you're going to gather together, gather together with the people of God. It says the Lord God which gathereth the outcasts of Israel saith, Yes, will I gather others to him. Will I gather others to him? What does that mean? He's saying there are those who are others. They are not here now. They are not part of the church now. All the members of the church, the saints of God, we are going to gather together. And then the others, those who have not known, known the Lord, those who have not come here before, those who are not part of us, he said, and I will yet will I gather others to him besides those that are gathered unto him. Ourselves, our neighbors, our friends, our co-workers, the Lord says they will gather with us. And while the Lord is blessing us, the Lord will bless them as well. And when we gather together like that, it is a sign, number one, that we're willing to fulfill the prophecy. Number two, that we're willing to yield and obey the commandment of the Lord. Number three, that we want to be in partnership with God so that he can fulfill his promise. Number, number four, it means that there is a commission with his promise. The Lord says, do it. That's the commission. And then he attaches a promise to it and will say, yes, Lord, we're looking for the fulfillment of the promise and therefore we're going to obey the commission. And it's a proof of our gratitude that God can even talk to us and he says, I want to bless you and what I want to give you, I cannot give you in isolation. When you are in your house, you must gather together and when we gather like that, it's a proof of our gratitude to God and a confirmation of our faith in the Lord that what we didn't have before, God says, we're going to have it this December. And because we believe that, it's a confirmation of our faith, and therefore we go together with the people of God. We're going to deal with uh, this study under three subtitles. Number one, personal preparation for the promised blessings. Personal preparation for the promised blessing. Number two, Proclamation by people desiring the promised blessings. Proclamation by the people desiring the promised blessings. Number three, participation and prayer for the promised blessings. Let's come to number one. We're talking about personal preparation for the promised blessings. What kind of preparation does the Lord want me to make as a pastor? What kind of preparation does the Lord want you to make as our overseer in our stage, 
our overseer in our region, our pastor in our local church? What kind of preparation does God want you to make as a member of the choir? A preparation the Lord wants you to make as a student, as a campus student, as a secondary school student, a kind of preparation the Lord is calling upon you to make as a woman coordinator and then as a coordinator the pastor of a local church in that district what kind of preparation the lord is asking us to make as members of the church and as for those who are here today you are here for the first time you are part of this too what kind of preparation is the lord desiring from you and from me from every one of us isaiah chapter 62 isaiah chapter 62 i'm reading from verse 10 and verse 11 go through go through the gates prepare ye the way of the people prepare ye the way of the people now something great is happening and a lot of people are going to be coming from every direction and the lord is saying we need to prepare the way for those people to come cast off cast off the highway gather out the stones lift up a standard for the people he's talking about preparing for the people to come it's not just that you are prepared only to come you are going to come i said you are going to come but now you need to prepare the way for the people to come and he says you take all hindrances away and he's saying that will be a stumbling block between you and your neighbor that if you talk to him he will not accept you that way and he's saying that will be a hindrance between you and your co-workers in the office between you and the people in the market between you and the fellow student between you and anybody your relative you take all the hindrances the way you cast out the stones and then you're able to prepare the people and prepare the way for them to come in verse 11 it says behold the lord has proclaimed unto the ends of the world Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. It says, everybody you meet, daughters of Zion, the men and the women, you will tell everyone. Now, it's, when it says daughter of Zion, I'm sure there are some people that are thinking that that means only women. You have to read your Bible very well to understand the Bible. Sometimes when it says the bride of Christ, the bride of Christ, the wife of the Lamb, it's not just talking about the men or sorry the women, it's talking about the whole church, the whole people that belong to the Lord, young and old and men and women, the same thing, there are times the daughter of Zion is used as a kind of title. For all the people of God in Israel. And the Lord is saying, Behold, thy salvation cometh. During this retreat, thy salvation cometh. Thy deliverance cometh. And the joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus' name. Behold, his reward is with him. And his work before him. And when he talks about clearing the obstacle. Taking the difficulties away. And telling everybody that you meet, everybody that you see, that something great is happening, and the salvation of the Lord, the fullness of the freedom that you need in the Lord, everything is coming. Get ready and take the hindrances away. Let me show you examples in Genesis chapter 45. Genesis chapter 45. And I'm reading there from verse 25. And the story here is that there had been a famine all over. A farming in the land. And Jacob was an old man by this time. And all his sons and their families they were going through that farming. And then surplus abundance was somewhere and they discovered it. And now they had to come back to tell Jacob about that abundance. It was the preparation. But you see, Jacob had some sorrow in his heart because he didn't know what had happened to Joseph. And at the end, to take all the obstacles away and show evidence to Jacob that something good was happening in Egypt and they needed to go there. Genesis chapter 45, verse 25. And they went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father. And he told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive. He is governor over all the land of Egypt. 
And Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. You see some things that happen. It's not Jacob had died. And therefore when they said Jacob is still alive, and there is blessing waiting for them over there, he didn't believe. His heart fainted. And that's the reason why you need to take the stones away, take the obstacles away, show them. And evidence that this December retreat, we're inviting them to, is going to be a great time, a great gathering. And of abundance is coming upon everyone. How did they take the hindrances away? How did they gather the stones out of the way so that Jacob will be able to go? Look at it now in verse, in verse 27. And he told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. And Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go. Those are the words we're looking for. Those are the words we want to get from the people we're inviting. When you tell them for the first time, maybe they are shaking. Maybe they are doubting, and then you begin to give them evidence. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. And you tell them with confidence, and the Lord will back up your confidence. Every good thing you tell them will happen at that retreat, every good thing will happen to them. And then you talk to them convincingly until, like Jacob, they will be able to say, I will go. Look at the next chapter, chapter 46, from verse 2. And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night, and said, Jacob, Jacob, and he said, Here am I. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. I will go down with thee. Look at that. You see, when, the, when you tell the people, turn to pray also about it. And then the Lord will convince them. And the Lord told Jacob, he said, that's a good decision you have made. You said you will go. I too, the almighty God, I will go with you. As you are sitting down there, you are making up your mind, I will go, I will go, I will go. Almighty God is reassuring you, I will go there with you. It's there, I will meet all your needs. It's there, I will bless you. It's there, I will pour my blessings upon you. And let me read from Numbers chapter 10. Numbers chapter 10. What if you tell somebody? And the person says, no, I don't want to go. I have all the plans. And I don't think I want to go to any retreat in such a place at this time. What will you do? Will you just give up and say, well, I told him and he said no. I told him and he said he couldn't go. What else will you do? Let's look at Numbers chapter 10. And I'm reading from verse 29. It says, Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Reguel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law. Who was this Hobab? What was he to Moses? Father-in-law. Take a hold on to that. We're journeying unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it you. Come thou with us. And we will do thee good. For the Lord has spoken good concerning Israel. To start with, you can see the invitation of Moses. It was positive. It was practical. It was prophetic. He said, come down with us. There was no doubt in the mind of Moses at all. They were going to a land playing with milk and honey. And he told the father-in-law, he said, you must come. I've discovered something good. I see this thing. This will enrich your life. I cannot see something like this and hide it from you. Come down with us and we will do the good practical, positive, and also prophetic. When we get over there, you are going to be part of those that will have those six, the riches of the land. And we are going to have the riches of Christ. But how did the man respond? Look at it in Bastachi. And he said unto him, I will not go. I will not go. But 
I will depart to my own land and to my kindred. And you know, that's where most of us stop. When I told him, and he said, I will not go. I've done my part. If he doesn't follow us, if he doesn't have the blessing, that's not my fault. I told him. Well, if you stop there, you will not know what happened later. What happened later, you see now verse 30. And he said unto him, I will not go, but I will depart to my own land and to my kindred. Let me show you what happened later. Judges chapter 1. In Judges chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 16. Judges chapter 1, verse 16. Don't leave them alone. Moses did not leave the father-in-law alone just because he told him the first time. And then the man said, no, I will not go with you. I will go back to my own land. He kept on, he kept on, he kept on putting pressure on him. You must come, you must come. You are missing something great if you don't come. And eventually the man yielded and went with them. Judges chapter 1 verse 16. And the children of the Canaanite, Moses, what? Moses' father-in-law went up out of the city of palm trees with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah, which lies in the south of Arad. And they went and dwelt among the people. You see, Moses did not give up. When he told him the first time, the man said, No, I have my own plans. I have my own place. I will not go with you. I will depart back to my land. And Moses kept on telling him, Moses kept on telling him, between this time and the 24th of December, when we're going to start the retreat, keep on telling them, they will come. And then when they pitch their camp with us, and the Lord showers blessings upon them, they will look at you and they will say, thank you very much, you didn't leave me alone. If you had let me alone that first time, you told me, and I said, no, I'm not going, I have my own plans, during this Christmas time, if you had let me alone, look at what I've got, look at what I've got, look at what I've got, and they'll thank you, and then not only that, they'll thank you, Almighty God will bless you because of them. Moses' father-in-law still went because Moses did not give up. You will not give up. Tell everyone around you, you will tell them. Won't you tell them? You will tell them. In Luke chapter 14, Luke chapter 14, we're looking at verse 23. Luke chapter 14, verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and edges and compel them to come in. That's what Moses did to the father-in-law. He compelled him. He didn't accept no for an answer. When you tell somebody and he says, No, I have my own church. No, we have our own camp. No, we have our own retreat. No, we have our own, um, own plans and we're going to do something. You should compel them with love, with gentleness, with promises, with prayer. Compel them to come in that my house may be filled. The Lord is telling us then, don't give up. You will not give up. In Zechariah chapter 8, Zechariah chapter 8, now, you see sometimes, there are some people that will take part in the publicity. And then they will say, let us go, let us go, let us go. And they themselves, they are not there. When the retreat comes, you see, that kind of publicity will not be effective. If you want to be effective, while you are telling them, let us go, you yourself will say, I will go also. Those words are important. Let us go, let us go, let us go. You are inviting them. And you too, you are saying, I will go also. We are looking at Zechariah chapter 8. Look at this verse 21. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 21. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily. Let us go speedily. So far, so good. But then uh, you have to commit yourself as well that, yes, I'm inviting you. Will you be there yourself? Of course, I'll be there. I'll be the number one there. And I'm inviting you to go. I'm not just sending you there. I'll be going along. Look at that verse 21. To pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts 
Tell me the last words there. Tell me out loud. Tell me with conviction. I will go also. You see, and that is the secret of effective publicity. That you know you are going. And you have made up your mind. Fully that she will be there and then with that personal commitment and personal preparation that you're going to be there you're also telling other people I'll be there, let's go along I'll be there, let's go along I'll be there, let's go along I will go also look at verse 22 yeah. many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord Thus says the Lord of hosts. If you make up your mind, yes, I'm going to go. And I'm inviting other people. And we're joining together, gathering together, so that we can be there. In those days it shall come to pass, that ten men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nations. He even shall take hold of the scourge of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you. When they see your commitment, and when they see the communication, the way you communicate it to them, when they see your confidence and your courage, and when they see your expectation and your faith, and they see that really what you're talking about is so important, that you are going, then it says, and other people will tell you, even before you talk to them, I've heard of it, we will go with you. And it says 10 people, can you have a goal like that? You know, our leaders have given us a goal that we should make sure that each of us will get two people. And some people think that is hard and that is tough. And God said, 